In the last lecture, we have been discussing about part 2 of our proof in equivalence of CFG and PDA. And we were trying to prove that a language is context-free if and only if some push-down automata recognizes it. And we were discussing part 2 in which we were given a PDA and we are trying to show how to construct a context-free grammar that recognizes the same class of languages accepted by the given PDA. And we also saw that there are two steps involved in this process. Step 1, which was to simplify the PDA, which we have already done in the first part, that is part 2a. And in this lecture, which is part 2b, we will be discussing step 2, that is to build the context-free grammar. So I hope you remember how we simplified the PDA and what were the simplification steps that we had to perform. And after we have simplified our PDA, the next step is to build the context-free grammar from the PDA that we have simplified. So let's see how we can do it. So here is the main idea that is involved in this process of building our context-free grammar. So first of all, we have to consider two states. Let's say we are considering two states P and Q in the pushdown automata. So assume that states P and Q are two states in the pushdown automata. And as I already told you, for every pair of states, there will be a non-terminal representing that state. So, for every pair of states in our push-on automata, we will have a non-terminal in our context-free grammar. So, if we consider two states, P and Q in the PDA, we have to see, could we go from P to Q without stack underflow and maintaining an empty stack at the beginning and end? Or, if something were already on the stack, they would never be touched. So, you have to see, can you go from state P to state Q without stack underflow? So, I already explained in the last lecture what we mean by stack underflow. Stack underflow means you should not try to pop anything from an empty stack. That is the condition of stack underflow. So, we should not go into stack underflow and also, we should start with an empty stack and end with an empty stack. So, can you go from state P to Q by maintaining an empty stack at the beginning and at the end? In the course of execution, you may push and pop elements or symbols from the stack, but you should make sure that in the beginning the stack is empty and at the end also the stack is empty. So, can you go from state P to Q by doing that? Or, if something were already on the stack, they would never be touched. So, let's say that something was already there on the stack. Okay, when we came from some other states, something was already there on the stack. And can you go from state P to state Q without touching or modifying the symbols which were already there on the stack? So, we have to see if we can do that. And we have to see what strings would do that. So, by following which sequence of strings can you go from state P to Q by maintaining all these stack conditions that is mentioned over here. So, we will create a non-terminal called A subscript PQ in our grammar. And A PQ will generate exactly those strings that will take us from P to Q maintaining all the above stack conditions. So, I told you, for going from state P to Q, what are the sequence of strings that you need to follow so that all these stack conditions which are written here are fulfilled. Those strings will be the string that will be generated by this non-terminal A, P, Q. Because we are trying to go from state P to state Q and for this pair of state, we create a non-terminal in our context-free grammar which we call A, P, Q. And what is the string that this non-terminal is going to generate? It will be those strings that will take us from state P to state Q, maintaining all these stack conditions which we have mentioned here. So, let me just mention once more what are the stack conditions. We should not go to stack underflow and we should always start with an empty stack and end with an empty stack if the stack was already empty or if something was already there on the stack, then those things which are already there should not be touched. So, from going from state P to Q, you may push or pop other elements to the stack. But if something was already there before you go to this state P and Q, then those things should not be touched. So, maintaining all these stack conditions, if you are able to go from P to Q, 
then you should see which are the strings that are taking you from P to Q. So those strings will be the strings that will be generated by this non-terminal A, P, Q. All right. So this is the main idea that we need to follow. Now we will see two different cases that we have. So here is case number one. So in case number one, what we want to do is that we want to go from state P to state Q. So we are going to create a non-terminal in our grammar for this pair of state P and Q. And this is what happens in this transition. So let's see what happens. So this is the stack that we have here. And let's say that this is my stack. And let's say that when we are in state P, there was already something on the stack. There were already some symbols on the stack. But as I told you, we are not allowed to touch this. We are not allowed to modify what is already on the stack. So this portion, it represents the things that are already there on the stack. And then on going from state P to R, the symbol A is red. In state P, when the symbol A is red, we push the symbol Z onto the stack. And then we go to the next state state R. So remember that we are trying to go from state P to state Q but we cannot directly reach to state Q like this so we have to go through some other states. So the first step is we have to go from P to R and on going from P to R we read the input symbol A and the symbol Z is pushed onto the stack. So this is my stack right now and then when we are in state R we see that Z was already pushed in state P. So Z is already there in the stack and we have to go from R to S now. And in going from R to S, this Z is already there in the stack and from going from R to S, this Z is also the portion that we considered that should not be touched. So from going from R to S, this Z is not touched. Okay, This Z which was already pushed by state P is not touched or not popped and then some other things may be popped or pushed onto the stack for going from state R to S. Alright, and let's say that when we reach S, the next transition is to go to state Q. So in Q what happens, we read the symbol B and we pop the symbol Z. Alright, the Z which was pushed over here from state P is finally popped when we come to state Q. So here we see that the symbol that is pushed which was Z by the state that we are first considering, that is P. And the symbol that is popped when we reach the state where we want to reach, that is also Z. That means they are the same. The symbol pushed here and the symbol popped here are the same. So this is case number one when the symbol pushed in the beginning and the symbol popped at the end are the same. So we have to ask ourselves, what strings can be generated by following this path? If we follow this path, what are the strings that will be generated? So we see that here A was red and then here B is red. So A and then there are something which happens in between and then B. So these are the strings that will be generated by following this path. Now I say that A is red here and B is red over here and in between there are, there are some dots. Now what will be there in these dots? So we see that the dots represents this part for going from state R to S. Now how can we represent the non-terminals that will represent states R and S? So we can represent the pair of states RS by using the non-terminal ARS. So ARS will be the non-terminal that represents the pair of states RS. Now what will be generated by this non-terminal? You have to follow the same thing that you did for PQ. Alright. In the same way for RS also, those strings that will take you from R to S by following those tag conditions, that will be the string generated by this ARS. So I can say that for going from state P to Q, I create this non-terminal APQ and what does it give? It gives A, this A, this one and then in between there is an, another non-terminal A, R, S, R, S and then this B. So this is the rule that we have and this rule will generate exactly those strings. And what do we mean by those strings? Those strings are the strings that will take us from state P to 
queue maintaining all the stack conditions that we have already discussed. So for this much portion of our PDA, we have converted it to a rule which will be added to our context free grammar. So this is the CFG that we have created you for this push down automata. Okay, so this is case number one. Now let's see another case which is case number two. So in case two we see that here also we want to go from state P to state Q and again we cannot go directly from P to Q but there are some states that we need to go through in order to reach Q from P and these are the stacks that we have. So here let's say that we are starting with the state P and then we are reading A over here and then we push a symbol W to our stack. So here W gets pushed on to the stack. So the first symbol that get pushed on to the stack is W. And again we assume that there were some other things in the stack which we are not supposed to touch or modify. So these are there as it is and W is the first symbol that is pushed when we go from state P. And then let's say that as we continue our execution we encounter some other states like R and maybe there are some more in between and somewhere in the middle this W which was pushed it somehow gets popped okay it somehow gets popped so in case number one you remember that once that Z was pushed it could not be popped until it reached the state Q but here the first symbol that is pushed by P somewhere in the middle of the execution it gets popped all right it gets popped and then this becomes my stack now this w is gone it's popped and those things which were remaining in the stack only those things are there in the stack and then we restate r and when we continue from state r let's say that some symbol called z it gets pushed onto the stack means it gets inserted to the stack so in between in the execution when we go from R to Q somewhere in the middle the symbol Z got pushed to the stack okay so this becomes my stack now the things which were already remaining they are already here and then the symbol Z is pushed onto the stack and then in state Q when we reach state Q B is red and then Z is popped so this Z will be popped okay so here also what happens we started with an empty stack empty in the sense that all the things that were already there we did not touch them we pushed something and we popped something but when we reach this state Q those things which we were not supposed to touch they remain as it is and then the things that were pushed in the course of this execution from P to Q are all popped when we reach state Q okay but the thing that you notice here is that the first symbol that is pushed which is W which is pushed by P is not the last symbol that is popped. The last symbol that is popped is Z. So the symbol that was pushed here and the symbol that was popped here are different. So when we are pushing different symbol and popping different symbols then we have to see what are the strings that can be generated by following this path. So if you have this kind of a path where different symbols are pushed and popped in the beginning and the end then by following this path what are the strings that will be generated and if we can find out those then we can say that those are the strings that will take us from state P to state Q without modifying the stack. Now how can we write it? We can write it like this. We want to go from state P to Q, P to Q. So we create a non-terminal for this pair of state PQ which we call A subscript PQ and then what will it give? It has to give the non-terminal APR and why do we do this? This is because from P we have to go to R first and some pushing and popping is occurring in this area. So APR represents a non-terminal for the pair of states P and R and then from R we again have to go to Q. Here again some different things are pushed and popped to the stack. So this pair of states R and Q are represented by the non-terminal A, R, Q. So the non-terminal A, P, Q for the pair of states P and Q gives the non-terminal A, P, R and A, R, Q. So this rule will generate exactly those strings. What do I mean by those strings? Those strings that will take us from P to Q maintaining all the mentioned stack conditions. So 
if you have this kind of a case, then this is the rule that has to be added to your context free grammar. So, in case one, we saw if we have that kind of a case, what is the rule that we should add to the grammar? And in case two, this is the kind of rule that you should add to the grammar. So, even if you have PDE of this form, we have converted it into context free grammar by converting it into rules of this form. Okay. So, this was about case 2. Now, there are a few more things that we need to remember. We have already seen two cases and we have seen how to form the rules for those two cases of PDA to convert it to context free grammar. Now, if you want to get from any state P to itself, then what is the rule that you have to add? So, we have seen that in PDA there are self loops. That means there are states that goes to itself on getting some kind of inputs. So, if you want to get from any state, let's say P, to itself, then what is the rule that we should add to our context free grammar? That means how can we convert this kind of a state to context free grammar? So, for doing that, it is like this. We add a non terminal called APP. And why do we call it PP? Because we are going from P to P itself. That is why we are calling it APP. And what does it give? It gives epsilon. So, a subscript pp giving epsilon. This is the rule that will be used to substitute the state that is going to itself. So, if you have a PDA in which a state is going to itself, then this is how you will convert it to the equivalent rule in your context free grammar. So, these were the main rules and this one, let me just mention it again. I have already taught you this in the first part of part 2a. So, it says that if a PDA accepts some strings, then there is a way to go from the starting state which is Q0 to the final state which is QF. That does not modify the stack. And our start non terminal is AQ0 QF. So, if our PDA is going to accept some kind of strings, that means what does it mean? If a string is accepted by our PDA, means there is a way in which that string can travel from the starting state. Q0 to the final state QF without modifying the stack. So, without modifying the stack means that we start with an empty stack and end with an empty stack. And then our start non terminal is A Q0 QF. So, you always know that in context free grammar we used to have a start symbol which we denote by S. So, that start symbol or the start non terminal will be A Q0 QF. The pair for the states Q0, the starting state and the final state QF will be the starting non terminal for our push down automata. All right, so these are the rules that you need to follow, and you saw that whatever kind of push down automata you have, you are able to convert it into its equivalent rule for a context free grammar. So we have shown how to build our CFG. We have already simplified the PDA in the last lecture. And then we have also built the context free grammar in this lecture by following those rules. We have seen what are the rules we need to follow, and using those cases, we have seen whatever kind of push on automata we have, we are able to put it in the form of rules in context free grammar. So, given a PDA, we have already shown how to construct a context free grammar that recognizes the same language, and hence we have proven part two of our proof and hence we can say that a language is context free if and only if some push down automata recognizes it. We have proved part one and also part two. And now we can say that PDA and CFG or CFG and PDA are equivalent or the class of languages accepted by push down automata and context free grammars are exactly the same. So this was about the equivalence of CFG and PDA. So, I hope you understand this. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.